Hi guys and welcome back to Fiashi. Today we have a video that I see a lot of comments on. People shit on me for loving America and I hate it, especially when it comes to the finances and how you can get much better off in America than in Europe. So today we're doing the video to debunk either my opinion or the people's opinion in America. There's the whole misconception or belief that free healthcare, free education is actually the difference between an awesome life and an awful life. Today, we're going to look at the cost of living between Rome, which is my city, and Washington DC, which is the area where I live in right now. We're going to look at incomes versus expenses. I'm not going to look at everything. I'm just going to look at the basics because people here are saying I cannot even get by with the basic necessities. So we're going to focus exactly on that. And we're going to figure out the numbers at the end. How much money will you end up at the end of the year after taxes and everything? And where are you better off to create a good financial future for you and your family? Guys, let's start with salaries. We're going to start with gross salary. So Gross salary in the Roman area is around 32,000 32, euros a year, which is around 33,000, 34,000 a year. In DC, on the other hand, the average income is 78K and 774. DC is the one of the highest paying areas in America. It is a major city. It is also the capital. So you have a lot of government jobs that pay very well. The question is now taxes after your gross income how much is left to you of course Italy will have a higher tax rate uh, because you have a lot of services that are included in taxes which are not in America after tax your 32 grand will become 23,000 dollars euros and 406 while in DC your 78.7k will become 57k and 557 here we have a 30 percent tax rate here the tax rate is a little lower but here you get much more back apparently will it make a difference we're gonna see that now we're gonna start with rent i made averages in general some people will punch me in the face for what i will say now some people will agree some people will say no it is too low or too high the average rent in Italy, in Rome specifically, between city center, outside, one bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, and everything, is around 1,000 euros a month, which adds up to 12 grand. If we look at DC, if we look at all of the DC area, I'm going to also include Arlington, Roslyn, because DC, if you look at the size of DC, it's incredibly smaller than uh, Rome. The rent goes around $2,000 a month. And we're talking about actually renting your own place. I've seen places for $1,600. I've seen places for um, $3,200. Uh, we can say twenty-four grand a year is a pretty okay number. Some people hate me. Some people love me on this one, especially the ones that, that live in D.C. Then we have health insurance, the biggest cost of Americans, apparently. Is it the biggest cost of Americans? Uh, clearly not, uh, because rent is much higher. The fact is, in Italy, even though more and more people are turning to private health insurance because they are pissed at waiting months for the public system to cure them, they're going into private health insurance right now to get cured quicker. But to be fair, in this comparison, we got to give advantage points to Italy and say that Italians pay zero in health insurance because they have a public healthcare system, which is far from the truth. But yeah, anyway, let's let's... Let's try to be on Europe side. And then we have DC where online, if you Google it, the average health insurance per month, if you put it all together in a year, costs around 4656 per person. And this is DC numbers. This is not the average US numbers. Next, we have food. The food is incredibly similar among the two parties, especially if you compare it to the difference in incomes, because income is two point something times higher in DC compared to Rome, but the cost of food is not actually twice as high. In Italy, we pay around 3,600 a year. Uh, this is more of an Italian number. In, uh, um, in America, it's around $5,259. So close to twice, but not really. A little under twice as much. Internet, we got 720 in America, 300 in Italy. Phone bills is actually quite similar, especially because in Italy we still pay our phone bills based on the gigabytes we use, while in America it's mostly unlimited. I use Visible, I pay $25 a month, which is incredible, and I post 20 TikToks a, a day, so the internet works pretty well, even at a cheap price. Phone bill is still higher in America with $400 a year compared to $300 a year. 
Some of you have a Ryzen which costs $90 a month, or some have something else which is much cheaper, like me, on average $400 a year. Electric, this one is interesting. After the invasion that we saw in Ukraine, the prices of energy from which Europe was, uh, because Europe was getting a lot of energy from Russia, let's say bombed, they went through the roof and everything. And it is very funny to me how heating and cooling the 7,000 square foot home where I live in right now is actually cheaper than heating my apartment in Tarquinia, which is 1,000 square foot. So if you look at these numbers, uh, even though they're taken from Google, uh, they're actually not accurate because the average high of house in America is much bigger than the average house in Italy. Anyway, we're going to stick with the numbers I found online, which put Italy in a net advantage in that because the cost of electric, and I'm going to focus on a house that runs only on electric without gas, is 1300 compared to 1752 a year. Car. Okay, I make a lot of videos on TikTok uh, trashing people that on average spend $700 a month in America to own a car. What the hell are you driving? Especially if 70% of you cannot even afford a $1,000 expense. You cannot afford a $1,000 expense and you have a payment that on average is 70% of that $1,000 expense every single month. Buy a used car and fix the issue. I don't know. That's my opinion. You do whatever you want. The fact is, per year, you pay around $8,400 for your car also in Washington DC, while in Italy, and I have the same opinion about Italians because consumerism, unfortunately, is coming to Italy too, we are at uh, $4,320 because on average we pay around $36, uh, three, no, yeah, uh, $360 euros a month for our cars. Gasoline, this one is funny, we pay $8 a gallon in Italy, which sums up at $31. $100.80. Well, in America, even if you drive your V8s, gasoline is so cheap, under $4 on average, that you pay around $1,800 a month. And most of our commute is on highways and not in the traffic you have in places like Rome. And lastly, to be, let's say, fair towards the Italian, uh, uh, say, lifestyle, we can also include student loans. On average, Americans spend around 300 to between 200 and 300 a month in their student loans for 20 years which italians do not because our college is either extremely cheap or if you are from a lower income families also in some cases free if you want to go to private college we have a lot of services that help you go through it we don't have the debts that americans have so for education we pay zero so once again I'm pushing more towards the side of Italy. The question is, at the end of the year, who wins? Who is financially better off just in terms of life expenses? At the end of the year, the American DC person on average will have $7,162 in their pocket, while the Italian, after all these expenses, this one is funny actually, is at minus $1,574 euros which is actually minus 1000 around uh, 1700 uh, depending on the exchange rate of the two so unless the italian does something about one of these expenses uh, they are actually li living in negative territory and no matter what losing money the american on the other hand has a disposable income of 7162 dollars now i understand that 70 percent of you do not have a 1000 dollar expense so it is notorious that americans are not very good with um, their disposable income and spending it on trash but the fact is if you are a responsible person and if you're a responsible average person having average expenses you're seven thousand dollar better off yeah yashi but what if i'm six six sorry if i'm sick i have a problem and i have to pay my out-of-pocket maximum which most health insurances have a nine thousand five hundred dollars first of all i will say this when i did the health insurance calculation i saw the average cost of health insurance when you have a job, in most cases, part of these $4,000 is paid by the company. In my example, I was paying $100 when I was working for Volkswagen, and they were paying the remaining $3,000 a year. Sorry, I was paying $1,000, and they were paying the remaining $3,000 a year. So this cost is actually much lower normally for the average person with a job. So first of all, which brings this number above $9,000. Secondly, if the health insurance is through your company, you have still have deductible. It is very rare for you to get to this number unless you are extremely sick. And then once again, let's say that uh, 
Let's take this uh, thing that I just talked about. So you have an extra two grand, you're at nine grand, and you actually have to spend your entire out-of-pocket maximum. You're still better off than the average Italian, which is losing $1,500, or you'd be losing around $500 if you really want to go into negative territory. And this is the average person. If uh, this guy comes to DC and lives uh, with roommates, kind of like my cousin is doing, in a big house, he got a big house with four people, he's actually spending $1,200 a year in uh, $12,000 a year in rent. He doesn't own a car, he's paid in cash, so minus 8,400, he doesn't have this expense. And he doesn't have gasoline expense, actually he has a gasoline expense, he's getting a scooter, so in cash by the way, so his expense probably be I don't know, $500 because uh, you're doing 70 miles a gallon. No student loan because uh, he studied uh, first in community college and then uh, in a cheap public college. He's better off by 3,008. <coughs> that's 9,000, that's 12,000, that's 24,000. So he has more, he has a disposable income of 30 grand extra every single year compared to the Italian counterpart. So here's what I'm saying. In America, generally speaking, if you're a responsible person, it seems like you're way better off compared to Italy. Now, in Italy, of course, the fact that the government is taking care of things that are tedious and stuff is definitely nice. But you have no idea of the bureaucracy that you have to go through if you want to get stuff done, especially if you're getting health issues. You'll be very surprised. In many cases, myself, I went directly through a private, uh, let's say, uh, clinic to get cured in Italy and paid, which is not as much in America, is in America. It's way less, so trust me, but I still went to private to get stuff done quickly. And many Italians are going through the same process of getting private health insurance. Guys, if you found some value in this video, please like and subscribe. If you have questions about this, leave a comment. I might do a digger dive in some sectors of this video here, or do other comparisons with other cities. I could do Milan and New York, for example. That will be another interesting one. If you have other questions outside of this, leave a comment. As I'm doing also with the Italian part of my YouTube, I use a lot of the comment questions to make extra videos as people are interested in the different points of view that I have. Also because I live in China, Australia, Germany, Italy, and the United States. Thank you for watching and I see you on the next one.